today we are looking at uh, group accounts, group accounts, and uh, by group accounts it means that we are referring to group of companies, to so group of companies. There will be a group of companies when there is what we call a parent and subsidiaries. It could be one subsidiary, it could be two or more subsidiaries. But there must be a parent and there must be at least one subsidiary. Now let's look at the parents. The parents could also be referred to as an investor. And obviously this one will be the investees. Right. Now the parent is an entity that controls one or more um, subsidiaries. So the key thing there is that the parent controls one or more subsidiaries. In order that there will be a group, there must be a parent which has control over one or more subsidiaries. The key element in there is control. So the question is, what is control? An investor is said to have control over another um, entity, which is an investee. When the investor is exposed or has rights to variable returns from its involvement with the investee and it has the ability to affect the returns through its power over the investee. There are three key elements in the definition of control that we've just seen. Um, the first one has to do with power over the investee. Power over the investee. And this power is actually described as having existing rights that give the parent's ability to direct the activities of the investee that significantly affects the investee's returns. Now, um, the second element is exposure or rights to variable returns. So we have exposure or rights to variable returns okay so exposure or rights to variable returns from its involvement with the investee then the third one is ability to exert power so ability to exert power over the investee to affect the amount of the investor's returns so ability to exert power over the investee okay, um, to affect the amount of the investor's returns. Now, for there to be controlled, these three key elements must exist, and that is the criteria for determining the existence of control. So, this control is what gives rise to parent subsidiary relationship. Which obviously brings about group of companies. Now, once there is group of companies, it means that we are required to prepare consolidated financial statements. Consolidated financial statement could be in the form of consolidated income statements consolidated statements of financial position consolidated cash flow and all other relevant financial statements this consolidated financial statement is being prepared for the group as though it was a single unit However, there are certain entities, parents, which may be exempted from the preparation of consolidated financial statement, even though they have subsidiaries. Let's look at the instances under which parents may be exempted from the preparation of consolidated financial statements. A parent may be exempted from the preparation of consolidated financial statements when, one, uh, the parent is itself a wholly owned or partially owned subsidiary of another um, entity. 
So what I mean is that let's assume that this is parents, which has a subsidiary S, but these parents also have another uh, parents. Let's call it parents one. If this is the situation, then this parent here will be exempted from the preparation of consolidated financial statement because this parent is wholly owned, is wholly or partially owned by P1. So the reason why we are exempted P from preparation of consolidated financial statement is because it is wholly or partially owned by P1. So two, um, its debt or equity instruments are not traded in a public uh, market. Now, public markets could include, uh, say, the Ghana Stock Exchange, or it could even be uh, an over-the-counter uh, market. At the end of the day, whether the market is locally or it is internationally, the most important thing is that the debt or equity instruments of the parents are not being traded on any such um, public market. So, three, uh, for the, the third condition for exemption is that the parents um, did not file or is it in the process of filing its financial statements with a securities commission or other regulatory organizations for the purpose of issuing any class of instruments in a public uh, market. So here, we are not trading, right? But we are also not in the process of getting the things that will give us the right to trade. So we are not filing our financials, we don't even have the intentions of um, getting registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, we are not taking the initiative to, um, be, to be trading in the public market. If that is the case, we would be exempted from um, consolidation. So the last condition required for exemption uh, of the parents from consolidation is that the parents ultimate or any intermediate parents of uh, the parent produces financial statements available for public use that comply with IFRS in which subsidiaries are consolidated or are measured at fair value through profit or loss in accordance with the IFRS um, term. Now what this means is that there is uh, an ultimate parent or there could be an intermediate parent, meaning that the parent itself has a parent. So if that parent uh, prepares financial statement, consolidated financial statement, which are in compliance with IFRS 10, then it means that the parents in question will be exempted from the preparation of the um, consolidated financial statements.